Good evening, COVID cast peeps. Welcome to another Thursday evening. We're talking today about the spiritual laws of money. We don't ever miss we. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> we just had an election in Jamaica. Um, we've just had an upsurge in our COVID numbers. We are officially in the second wave and we are continuing our discussion because notwithstanding, we want everyone to end up on the other side of this, either in a better position, but certainly in a worse position. So today we're gonna to be talking about the spiritual laws of money because during this COVID time, persons have lost their jobs. Some people have lost their businesses or their businesses have the, the output from the business has reduced exponentially. So all kinds of decisions have to be made now. But you know, one of the things Nevada that we don't talk about, we don't like to talk about money, you know. We don't Absolutely. talk about our friends. We don't want to talk. And we actually, much of, many of us don't understand money. Yes, yes. And, and, we are, and we are embarrassed not to ask questions. I find that not your parents talk to kids. You must just get a job and go. And even friends who have friends who are in financial, um, the financial industry, they don't necessarily ask questions that would be pertinent and so on. So it's something that we we, we have a little embarrassment about. That's something we should know. And but we we're going to know if we don't ask. But we talk about it all the time, that we don't even talk about salaries. So even yes. when we're negotiating salaries, we're afraid to talk about what we're earning. We yes, don't want to ask yeah. anybody else what they're earning. So we're not even sure what kind of benchmark we're working with. So today Absolutely. we're going to be talking about money. Hi, Shelly and hi, Romeo. Welcome to all our viewers. Um, today is a pen and pencil day. I wouldn't even say to put it on a device. I would have said write today so that you're really paying attention to what we're talking about. So Nevada, you're going to take us today through about, about how many spiritual laws of money are 12, there? 12, 12 spiritual laws. And this is a fundamental, once you understand these 12 laws, um, you will have a fundamental reshift. No. It's not easy to adopt all 12 sort of in your life. Like the Ten Commandments, you know, you can't manage all of them. Maybe the lust still catch you. But um, so there may be some that you are um, have more difficulty with and others that it's relatively easy. But what I want to do today is to raise awareness about how you change your mindset about money. Okay. So for our viewers, Nevada Poe is a lead architect for the PSOJ SME project. Um, yes. for this topic and in fact all our topics on COVID cast a weekly memo is sent out please email us at sme at psoj.org this one is a, I cannot miss this is a print and have by your bedside memo Nevada before we start I think it yeah. would be useful if you told people the genesis of this particular course that you've created on the spiritual laws of money Yes, absolutely. I just want to make one comment, though, Rochelle, so everybody knows. The memo contains a summary of the discussion that we are going to have now, as well as in the back, we have resources. So we have curated the internet with articles and videos and all and, and podcasts that are around the topic. So by the time you read the memo, look at some of those articles and so on and listen to this program, you actually have a very robust understanding of the topic. Here is the genesis of this. I um, about, I think it's about six or seven years ago now, Grace Baston, who's the principal of um, Cambion College, asked me to create a course on critical thinking. Mm -hmm. And as I was coming up with topics and sort of it evolved over time, and certainly we did things like um, the re religions of the world. And then I found, I realized that many of our students, even rich, rich kids, by the way, had no sense of money how to think about money, how to manage money, what, what is a stock, what is a bond, stuff that you would think that, and in other communities, for example, the Jewish community and so on, there's a lot more push in trying to make sure kids understand money. So I developed this course. It's a few modules of which I'm sharing one of the modules today, which is around, because the main thing you want to teach kids, young people first, is how do I orient mentally around money? How do I learn to respect it? How do I learn to accumulate it so I don't waste it? How do I learn to have it? Because we recognize that over time, communities that are in command of money are able, therefore, to build and grow. One of the things that's hampering us in Jamaica is that we don't yet have a good command of money. Mm 
And so part of what I'm trying to do here tonight is also in conjunction with um, the Bank of Jamaica. The Bank of Jamaica, um, who, who's been on a, a financial inclusion program, getting yeah. more people into the financial system, believes that financial literacy is a critical part of financial inclusion. Mm -hmm. That means more of us must try to understand money. More of us must try to understand how to keep money, how to invest money. And therefore, this is the lesson 101 on financial literacy. Okay, well, I have my paper and pen out. Excellent. And take it from the top. Spiritual Excellent. law number one. Let's jump right in. Okay, spiritual law number one. Here's the situation. In 2008, during mm -hmm. the middle of the last global financial crisis, when we kept hearing trillions of dollars lost in the stock market, trillions of dollars lost in the um, home market, the housing market, there was a strange question on a lot of people's minds. Uh, and they were all asking people who were involved with finance. And the question was this, where did all that money go? <laughs> where did it go? There were trillions of dollars all over the place. People were worth billions. And all of a sudden, they weren't worth anything. Where did that money go? And here is the odd thing. And everybody jaw dropped when they heard this. The truth is, money is fiction. It actually does not exist. Except in the mind of people who believe that it does exist. You see, unlike, you know, the things like pieces of paper and so on that exist in the physical world, there is nothing in the physical world that self-identifies as money. When you see a $100 bill, what you're seeing is a piece of paper with ink. There's no scientific tool, whatever it does, to try and discover the financial part of that piece of paper. It doesn't exist. It exists by agreement. People simply agreed that the stock market and the housing market was worth trillions one day and that it was worth much less trillions another day. That was all. And once you understand this fictive notion of yes. money and value, then you realize that in it, you are also mentally, you have to be mentally prepared to manage it. It's not like a thing that is going to resist, like a piece of paper has properties. Money can come and go and flow, be high value, low value. And it's mm -hmm. for you to recognize this narrative quality of money. I say that because there's something else that I thought was very interesting. When I started giving this lecture several years ago, not to the campaign students, but to adults, and I asked everybody, do you have enough money? And no. very rarely did people ever say yes. Most people said no. No. And whenever and this is people who are millionaires and people who have who have one job and all kinds of people, right, with different levels of income. When I asked, how much more money would you need to be enough? No. Everybody said about no. the same. Two to three times yes. the amount that I have. Meaning it was across the spectrum. Yeah. But what it is is that at two to three times, what happens is when you are locked into a particular lifestyle, the life you can see just ahead of you is about two to three times what you have. If you actually move to two to three times what you have, you then start to see the life two to three times. So it's never enough. You. So you keep adjusting. Again, this narrative portion of money. So when you ask people, and this is also crucial, how you mentally control money, how do you know if you're rich enough? And rich enough is a combination of what you have and what you desire. Not and what you, you can owe. make your what? Sorry. Not what you have and what you owe, but what you have and what you desire. What you desire or what, but minus what you owe. The owe, the owe is a different thing, right? <laughs> so you can control your feeling of being wealthy by increasing what you have or by decreasing what you desire. If you have a thousand dollars and you don't want anything, actually you're going to feel very rich. <laughs> if you have ten million dollars and your dream is a fifteen million dollar home, you're going to feel very poor. Feeling rich is also a mental matter. Money is narrative fiction. 
crazy place to begin, but it is the truth. Can <laughs> you see me? You stunned me. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a, it's a crucial, it's a crucial place to start. Because for example, it is. It is because you, I remember you and I talked about this. Yes. yes because the, remember when we said, "Um, how much should I charge for my time? How much should you charge for your time for the project?" And I said, that's, and I always said to you, you charge what you think you are worth and see if you get others to agree. Yeah. The, your worth does not come from on high. Your worth is the perception of yourself and then the perception of others. Uh. It is not a hard thing that is set in stone. Yeah. This is why you can find, for example, somebody say consultant. Some consultants are ridiculously paid, and some consultants are not not that much paid. But what's happening is a different narrative. Capability is part of it, but also a different story. Yeah. Because if you're willing to walk away from things, exactly, you have a higher price. And if I you're not willing to walk away, your price is lower. Yes, price is lower. And this is actually a very very important point. Um, whether or not you are an entrepreneur or yes. you are an entrepreneur. So the, even the questions of how you are able to negotiate a salary and you wonder why the same two people are doing the same job and one yes. is able to negotiate a higher value than you were able to negotiate. Or if you are selling a particular product, it's all about that fictional value that you yes. place. And, and one, what you think the value is and how much somebody's willing to pay for it. Absolutely. What? And you take something, for example, like an Armani shirt, right? What does Armani do to be able to get you to buy the shirt for $500? There are fashion shows with celebrities that are held in places like Paris and London. And therefore, the narrative is created around the shirt so that even a shirt that manufacturing cost is $20, $30, is able to command a premium of $500 because Armani has created a narrative, a money narrative. That's so you, you know that tomorrow the digital hashtag is hashtag money is narrative fiction. We're going ding dong, we're going to have to make a song about it. All right, tell me about number two now. Okay, <laughs> excellent. Those with an extended financial horizon beyond the now will build greater wealth over time even at the expense of those often who are only focused on the now and i'm going to give you a classic example by nature have a much, i'm sure you have heard so many of us have heard the chinese are building the new silk road that is they want to connect a single trading item around the world right think about the imagination required to do that by the way there is no expectation on their part that that thing is going to take anywhere less than 100 years. So an entire country mm -hmm. is determined to build a project in the scope of 100 years. When that country negotiates with a country who's focused only on an election cycle, for example, two to four years, they will think nothing of being able to buy our assets actually quite cheaply. Because if somebody sees my assets in a hundred year increment and I see my asset in two to four year increment, I am invariably going to sell it cheap because I, I don't see the value beyond the three years or the next election. Okay. okay. So personally, what questions yes. do you ask yourself then when you're seeing yes. that future self? What questions should I be asking myself? So the question becomes, where do you see yourself financially in five to 10 years? And it's crucial to have a view of yourself in terms of a dollar amount because remember, you have a situation where somebody will say something to you like, um, no money down. Now, Rochelle, we know when I tell you no money down, you are going to have to pay money. And it's very likely that you are going to have to pay money for many years. Mm -hmm. But if I'm focused only on the now, no money down, Sounds very attractive. No yeah. one down. Except in five years, you are then weighted by accepting the no money down deal. But that's because you didn't have your horizon, your financial horizon, out for five years. The moment you recognize that you need a long-term horizon, you then say to yourself, 
I want to have this number, this amount of wealth, this amount of assets in five years, 10 years, and have a clear objective is to get there. Similarly, you say, what is your pathway? If I want 20 million Jamaican dollars in X number of years, how much money do I have to put away every year to get mm -hmm. that? Extend your financial horizon and you will do better over time. Those who focus only on the now, no money down, will find that over time, they're going to be broke. Okay. Number three, money comes to those least interested in the things that money can buy. Stop one it. of the problems, yes. So one of the problems that we have as a community is that when we sit back in the bed and we dream in, Boy, I want that car, you know. Badly. <laughs> exactly. Boy, I want that dress. Boy, I want to do that big vacation in Italy. And those are the dreams. Those are what you call consumer dreams. No, there's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with consumer dreams, but the dream that's missing, that should be dominant, is what I call the asset dream. Boy, I want to have $50 million of assets before I die, you know. The, the issue with that is that the moment you focus on that and you allow it to compete with, boy, I want that nice car, you actually reorient yourself around creating wealth and not just buying things. Because here's the thing. If you focus on, I want that nice car, then you may do things like borrow a lot of money to get that nice car. If you focus on, I want a certain amount of wealth, you will build the wealth to buy and build it up to then buy your car. But if your entire focus is consumer, then you recognize that you actually aren't focused on money. Money is distinct in itself, different mm -hmm. than things. Value money over things, and then money rather than things will fill your life. One of the things that I do when I do financial consulting is that I'm going to somebody's home. And um, I pull up stuff out of the, their, their cupboard and stuff. And I say, when I see you use this, when I sell them a um, blender, but nobody baking, da, 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 da. your holy party. Are you going to close? You go to somebody's closet and a lot of clothes still in the wrapper. And you say to yourself, look at this. Look at all these things that could have been money invested building your nest egg and is now dead inventory in your apartment, in your house. And it's always shocking the amount of things that people have bought and don't use because their focus was the consumer, not the assets invested. Let your lifestyle lag your income and do not let your income lag your lifestyle. Always be Say that again. Yes. Always be behind what you can afford. Mm -hmm. Let your lifestyle lag your income and not let your income lag your lifestyle. And what I mean by that is take the bus longer, even if you can afford a car. Drive a modest car longer, even if you can afford a better car. Live in a house less than you can afford. I had a marketing teacher, marketing teacher at business school that always said to me, be the richest person in your neighborhood or in your complex. Be the richest person. It means that when you settle into a place, every because what happens usually is we tend to be the poorest person in our complex because we're always aspirational to the thing. I don't want a house I can afford. I want a bigger house. <laughs> I don't want a clothes I can afford, a car I can afford. I want. You, you should not have a BMW being repossessed. That is absurd. You have you have you have taken on more than you can actually. When your your BMW is being re repossessed, that, that you've missed your mark, right? Mm -hmm. So what it is is that you focus on. What is it that's going to be the things that will be less than my income? Now, there is what's called, and uh, many people find it strange, is what's called the paradox of choice. Mm -hmm. Do you know there are people with 100 dresses in their closet or maybe have 100 different CDs, um, piece of music that you listen to? What you find is that when you go to select your shirt to wear in the morning, you tend not to select from the 100 you tend to select from an option of 15, 20. Why? 
you hit what's called the mental complexity. It is not possible. The reason why all those dresses are still in, still wrapped up and not used, it's not possible to select from 100 things. So you truncate it to 15, 20, and you focus on just taking out of those. Similar with house. You ever seen about with a big house? Huge house. But when you look at how the family uses a house, they're in three rooms. The yeah. bedroom, the kitchen, and the TV room. Mm -hmm. and, and you say all of the other things look like it is, is like museum, right? So mm -hmm. imagine that there's an optimal size house for a human being. So if somebody lives in a big 30 room house, actually, they physically cannot inhabit it. Or you see how many how many complexes are people with pools that are never swimming pools that are never used, right? So all of this stuff, things, things, things that never actually materialize with any meaning when it was possible actually to have that earning earning money uh, money for you. The paradox of choice is that we can have too many choices. So Nevada, like at this time now, when we when we're just looking, because you know. If you say you did have the hundred dresses, say yes. yes. So we're at a point now where you know you understand, and when you really think about it, you do pick fifteen, if that many, of the yes. dresses, and you keep wearing the same thing. No matter how much shoes you have, you still have the shoes them where you wear all the time. Absolutely. But you know, one of the things that we are also encouraging is let's not dwell on the mistakes. What you should have done in your twenties. No, you yes. can teach your children so they don't make the same mistakes. And Absolutely. having made the mistakes, what we're doing is we're causing a change. So Absolutely. we're never too old to learn and we're never too old to make the shift. So this is yes. all we know about the shift. And for those yes. of you who are just joining us, today we're talking about the spiritual laws of money. And we've gone through some interesting laws. We've started with money is narrative and fiction. <laughs> Ooh, that one stunned me. So remember too that at the end of the day, when we think about money, it really is all in our heads, how much money is available. Because sometimes you just wonder, how does money just disappear? How do entire um, financial industries just crash? Um, those with an extended financial horizon beyond the now will build greater wealth over time, which is so profound because, you know, sometimes we are thinking when we say six months ahead, we think we have thought way ahead. We're talking five to 10 years of a horizon. Money comes to those least interested in the things that money can buy. We didn't have to put on my pen, Nevada, because you know what? We think that we're earning money simply to buy things. But very, very interesting that you say that if you are actually dreaming of the money, you actually are in a better position to have the things without being broke. Um, yes. Let your lifestyle lag behind your income. Yes, and not your income. And not your not income. Your lifestyle. You see yes. my pause. Let your lifestyle lag Back of your income, not your income, lag back of your lifestyle. Right. right. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Number four, you cannot work your way into wealth. You can only save or invest your way into it. Now, here is the thing. And again, that sounds very strange. Very. But the constraint that you have is there are only 24 hours in the day. And you have to sleep for eight to 10 of those. And then you have to do all kinds of other things. So the maximum amount of time that you have in terms of hours is limited by the day. And therefore, if you are looking to work your way into wealth, you, you the, the maximum amount of wealth you will achieve is going to be limited by how much you can charge for your time because you can't extend the time. What's the trick? The trick is, if you have money working for you while you are sleeping or while you are doing your day to day, then you will be able to accumulate wealth because that money, earning interest, earning returns can be going forward without, I mean, you, you just need to set it up in whatever way is appropriate, but without you kind of actively working it. So recognize mm -hmm. that if all you are doing is working and not thinking about saving and investing, unless you are a sports star 
are a music star, I mean, big music star, both and them kind of things, who they're per hour, because you just need to run Olympics and get run little ads, right? But that's, that's when your dollar per hour is massive. Yeah. Most of us never get that. So we have to have money working while we sleep. So where while the money will work? Everything. Please tell us how this money works for okay. us. So here's the thing. First of all, whatever it is you're getting, no, presuming that you didn't have parents to give you money, but if you do, that's fantastic as well. Some kind of investment income, but let's assume that you don't. That your first money that you have is you earn it. Mm -hmm. You have to start putting away somewhere between 15 to 30% of the money that you receive. And this sounds crazy because everybody says, oh, I can do that, but I can barely afford what it is that I have. We talk a little later about hanging out with people with diff who earn different amounts of money. Because what that does is that you, are, you can see that somebody with 30, 40, 50% less money than you is able to build a happy life. The moment you see that, it opens up your imagination to the possibility of putting away 15 to 30% of whatever you receive. The first thing you do is give that money to your future self. So the first, when you get money, whether your salary or a gift or an inheritance, the first thing is not, oh, let me see what I can spend it on. The first thing you spend on is saving for the future. You are not indifferent either about when you start. There's a thing called the time value of money, which means the earlier in your life you start and the bigger amounts you put away, that number will compound. So you'll end up in a very different place in 10 years than somebody who was not focused on saving and investing. And what I want to talk about a little, because um, just to give an example, there's a slide I have with four people yeah. um, who actually have very different lifestyles. They earn exactly the same amount of money, but earn very different. And I've simplified it for the sake of the calculation because I want to make an illustrative point. Okay. You have the first person there, save first, then spend Joanna. She earns 7 million Jamaican a year, which is about 580,000 a month. And every year she puts away 20% of it, which is 1.4 million. And her investments earn her 10% per annum. In year five, if she keeps doing this, and again, I've obviously I've simplified it, she will have $8.5 million worth of savings, worth of investing, worth of assets. Which is, I want you to note, she has more than a year's worth of her salary. Yes. If she gets fired from a job, she will not panic. She has time. In 10 years, operating the same way, she would have $22.3 million put away. She can stop working for three years seven times 21 this is extraordinary this is that extraordinary amount of freedom and power because she can leave a job that she is not interested in she can leave a husband who are beat her all kinds of things can happen when she's sitting on that kind of power second we call him late to the money game peter he earns exactly the same as joanna seven million a year 580,000 a month, but for the first five years, he never saved nothing. He's out of the street, I hang out, bar, high bar bill and all. Mm -hmm. At the end of five years, he starts to put away 20% a year, which is 1.4 million, and he invests to earn 10% per annum. At the end of five years, he has no savings. Mm -hmm. At the end of 10 years, he has 8.5 million. So it's starting to build, but this is what I said, it matters if it started early or late. Yeah. Now let's talk about John, which is unfortunately what a lot of us and a lot of black people are in. Never saw a thing he did not want to buy. He earns seven million a year, five eighty a month. He never has enough money for all the things he wants to buy because he's like, no man, me deserve this. My lifestyle. No, start denying me half a bill to the boys buying them drinks, right? So every year he borrows seven hundred thousand a year. The interest rate he'd have to pay on that seven hundred thousand borrowed is more, so at twenty percent on a credit card to support his lifestyle. At year five, he's negative 5.2. Mm -hmm. At year 10, he's negative 18.2. And he is panicking. He is depressed. He has a very different life than Joanna has. 
His blood pressure is very high. Blood pressure is high. By the way, when COVID hit, Janet COVID said, hit. Mm -hmm. COVID hit, Janet said, all right, I'm, I don't know how long it went to take, but I'm okay. John, when him lose him job, panic. Mm -hmm. Right? This is a very different orientation, purely based on decisions made in the five to ten year time frame. Okay. Wow. Stayed home until man mess up her head, Marsha. Earned seven million a year, five eighty a month. She lived at home for one year and saved half her salary, three and a half million, from which she earned ten percent per annum. But in year two, she could meet somebody. Every minute might take money from her flex man, whatever, whatever. So she never saved anything else after three point five. Still. In year five, she has 5.6. Not quite her whole salary, but you know, yeah. enough to um, begin to get by. And by year 10, she has 9 million. The crucial so, thing. Her too messed up. At least her pocket was not completely messed up. Good. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But the bottom line is people who actually have the same income based yeah. on the decisions that they made were ended up in very different places within five to 10 years. Now, once you've put away a nest egg of the, with the 15 to 30% of what it is, you gotta think about what to do with it. Mm -hmm. And issues like inflation, devaluation, because you don't put up some money and then um, you lose it in terms of the inflation or the devaluation, yeah. as well as the risks that you're willing to take. So what you do is you try and find a balanced portfolio. Some of the money you'll put in non-risky, very non-risky areas, money that you would need in a year, two years, you put in non-risky areas, like certificates of deposit. Some you put a little more risk in, um, which is you don't need for three, four, five years. And then for the long term for retirement, you put something even more risky because you're not really worried about getting that money now. So you think about your money in terms of thirds. The diversified portfolio, either with direct investments or through collective investments, schemes like mutual funds and so on, is the way is the way you manage. But you first, if you don't have parents who give you money, you first have to just create the discipline yes. of putting the money away. By the way, this 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 is how we started with the agrarian economies, you know, because when we were farmers, the first thing you put away is what the seed, mm -hmm. because if you eat everything. You start next year. But yes. we forgot that in our history. In because an agrarian economy. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So that is really, really crucial. Number five. Financial independence and financial integrity are leading sources of mental strength and peace of mind. Um, there was a marketing teacher are telling you about that at, at business school who also told us you make it a priority to have what you call f u money okay that's what they say but everybody know what that is frank underwood f u money the ability to walk away from any situation that can mean parents because sometimes your parents are taking liberty and you need to find your own independence and you cannot be locked in living with your parents when is money is their money that you're living on Second, spouses that are not treating you appropriately or a job. So the idea that you want to buy and save towards what you call a dignity fund, right? Uh -huh. You can walk away from any situation with your dignity intact. Nobody can take liberty with you. There's not like liberty. We don't exactly. have liberty to take with you. Not at all. Exactly. No mm -hmm. liberty. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one of the things that um, when I first moved to New York after college and my mom and her best friend, you know, um, Auntie Dell, came to visit me in New York and I lived in this apartment that I rented. There was a crack dealer, crack dealer outside. It was a deep, dark basement apartment. Um, they, they came with me because you know, they lived with me, they stayed with me because that's what you do. I, we couldn't put my mother in a hotel. So she says, why would you live here? When you wear home, you have a nice house, housekeeper, this and that, etc. And I remember saying to her, Mommy, because it's mine. And if I am willing to accept living with the crack dealer outside in a sub basement apartment, it means that I am building financial independence. Mm -hmm. And that is about mental strength and peace of mind, right? Overwhelming debt, if you end up bar, 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 say, can't leave the house, can't leave the house, et cetera, et cetera, will create dis-ease. And yeah. we don't often talk about the psychological weight of debt, but it's real. Yeah. You ever see somebody with a woman and cancer the phone? 
You know, I always say that Brock is a living being. That when you're sleeping at night, Brock come into your room and wake you up and box you and say, What do you mean you're asleep? You have Brock, get up. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Yes. And be <laughs> and be in integrity with respect to your word and money owes. Money will flow to those who have financial integrity. If you are the sort of person who you borrow and never return, um, we never return eventually your the word gets out that you are you're yeah. not of integrity with the money and money doesn't come by the way we have over 100 viewers um on now uh any questions and stuff so it's there so really really people are clearly uh, the we're noting the questions and the commentary and you know our viewers are just cracking me up because they are so engaged the comments are are amazing but um, we have some questions which we're going to take at the end so and if you're just joining us we're talking about the spiritual laws of money we are at spiritual law number five just get your pen and paper out we are going to do a recap and we're taking questions at the end yes. so please oh, keep my coming. there's a poll um that they were doing so which of which of these do you need the help with most making more money 24 percent budgeting money 12 percent investing money 41 percent yeah. so okay the wealth of a community begins with understanding the difference between good debt and bad debt mm -hmm. right good debt is where you borrow to invest in an appreciating asset like a growing business bad debt is where you borrow to buy things like consumer items on credit card and it is always better to do things like save towards a vacation than borrow towards a vacation. So I'm going to tell you the difference between a community, right? Immigrating Jews, immigrating Arabs, immigrating Chinese often arrive in a new country like Jamaica or somewhere in Africa. And in less than two generations are part of the elite. They control the money. And you're like, well, how them just come? And I'm going to run the whole away, right? How that happen? And it is because of a different understanding about money. A community that borrows primarily to buy cars will eventually work for a community that borrows primarily to start and grow businesses. You ever see the Chinese man, even when he have him house on top, his shop underneath, he's not going to let the house, right, um, be the first thing that he buys. No. The business is the first thing that he buys. He's not going to let the car be the first thing that he buys. Because what you know about a car is that the moment you drive it off the lot, it's a depreciating asset. So you were paid more because you borrowed to get it on a depreciating asset. The Chinese man and the Jewish man, they focus on what, uh, where can I put my money to earn money? When mm -hmm. I earn money, I will buy the car. And he will buy a fancy car, but just not on day one. Right? He would buy the big house, but not on day one. Ten of them, ten of them um living at the living at the one room where we would have said, no, so they live like they can't live like that, right? But what are they doing? They don't have money. In fact, they're they're very cash rich, but what they're doing is preserving to build wealth. They're thinking future financial state. Future financial status not no. So now we have a particular thing that has come up during the COVID time, which you and I have talked about, right? And the issue that has put many small businesses in a dilemma. With revenue contracting in many businesses, should SMEs finance their operation through credit card debt? Now, the reason lots of SMEs do it is the easiest debt to get because you have a credit card already often. You can just extend the one overdraft, um, get them to increase the amount. And it looks attractive because why? The payments are small. Mm -hmm. Again, if you focus on the now, why well, you know I can manage this. Mm -hmm. However, no payment, my good just not juggle it. Juggling. But credit card percentage is what 20, 40 percent. So over mm -hmm. time, you can actually dig yourself into a hole, not even recognizing that your little, 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 little payment, pay the minimum balance, pay the minimum balance, and then boom, 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 them come take away, whatever, right? So you, this is the yeah. thing can choke, that can choke you. Credit card debt is not a thing in, in Jewish culture. They lend <laughs> at high rates, and that has been centuries, but no, but that, that kind of silly borrowing is not part of the culture, right? So we need to think about 
finding cheaper sources of credit or possibly closing the business. Because what you don't want is you, you and your business being taken down by not having the extended financial horizon. COVID yeah. is expected to move for two to three years. Do not get into debt that you cannot get out of and lose much of what you have, including sleep. Right? Yes. So I just want to, um, in summary, so for the first six, money is narrative fiction. Rich enough is a combination of what you have and what you desire. And therefore you can control how rich you feel. Those with an extended financial horizon beyond the now will build greater wealth over time. Money comes to those least interested in the things money can buy. Value people first, then money, then things. Dream as a producer, as an asset invested, not as a consumer. You cannot work your way into wealth unless you name Bolt or Kanye West. You can only save and invest your way into it. Earn while you sleep understanding inflation and risk so that you invest in a risk appropriate way for you and resolving mm -hmm. inflation and devaluation. Financial independence and financial integrity are leading source of mental strength and peace of mind. As you say, when you're broke, you can't sleep. The wealth of a community begins with understanding good debt and bad debt. Good debt is things that will earn money appreciate in value. Bad debt is things that are depreciating in value that you end up paying more for. Yes. And Nevada, just to point out, please continue sending the questions. I see, the, uh, Joel, I see your question. Gino, I see your question. Because you know, one of at this point in the game, people are asking the question. All right, so we're just supposed to go and save the money and invest the money, but mega dead left the money? In? <laughs> When <laughs> well, first of all, what's wrong with dead left the money, especially if you have children, right? Because that's the other thing. We notice that wealth, like again, we notice that wealth, those of those of us who have accumulated wealth, who can who have lived a nice lifestyle and then are, are able to leave some money for their children, even to create a start when, when they start. So it's not a horrible thing. But even those without children, right? What is it that you're trying to do? Remember at any point in your future, five years, 10 years old, when you have an amount of money, you have options. Yes. You can decide to start a business. Remember, Peter can't start no business. Him or money. Joanna can decide, I'm going to start a business. Or my father have medical issues that I never planned for. Guess exactly. what? I, I can afford to help him, right? So don't worry so much about when you're going to spend it. At any point in time, remember, it is your money. You can choose. You can choose to take a year off and go travel the world. You can choose to have a deposit to buy a nice house. You can choose to learn about investing. So it's quite possible that all you are doing is building a bulwark for life. And mm -hmm. if a COVID hits, you are ready. Yeah. And, you know, I think we're, we're entering into the, the other part of the discussion now where you are there saving and you buy a modest car but those around you the cars look very splashy your car the window can barely go down i mean it's a one but you yeah. know how it goes it makes nice yeah. and yeah. when you look around you, you the other people them look like they're flourishing yes. can we yes. talk a little bit about that socialization yes yes absolutely so there's a thing what i call socialize across the financial spectrum right? Other people's financial lives can give you, give you perspective. One of the worst things that we're all caught up in now is following the social media of the rich and famous. Because what happens is that all you do when you look at those Instagram, Facebook, you just feel your lack. Why am I not in Mykonos? Why am I not driving that car? Why are my children not at wherever, right? Why don't, why am I not wearing those um, designer clothes? And, but the problem with that is that, again, you are creating a negative mental relationship with money. 
if in mm -hmm. fact what's not on social media it's very rare that you see um, somebody social media celebrating a simple life or if they are celebrating a simple life nobody's following them right two people are follow them but thousands and millions of people have other people who have got italy in a private plane right so all you see is that your mind reorients around your lack right so open your awareness by socializing across the spectrum Mitch, yes you can go with some people who eat at big fancy restaurant but also hang with those for whom kentucky fried chicken is a, is a treat right yeah. create a sense of balance about how happiness in life is created detached from the amount of money because you will come to appreciate what you have by hanging out with those who might have less and then you choose right no here's the thing if you're at home watching this on your laptop actually you are in the top 20 percent richest people in the world Marie. And you're like, you are crazy but i'm telling you and in fact in terms of human history you're in the top one percent poverty disease homelessness you see all them migrants trying to get from one country to another that is the norm of life if you are sitting with food shelter clothes working electricity working water and a laptop welcome to life's bonanza the reason you don't feel rich is because you're focused on the, much of the social media of those who are living better but you're not creating and realizing the power of actually what you have so very crucial this idea of socializing across the financial spectrum next respect money and if you would respect you so know your strengths and weaknesses when it comes to money i always ask people this question do you know how much money is in your bank account or investment account what i've found is that those who can um identify how much they have within reason maybe not to the penny but within a few hundred dollars few thousand dollars you find that they have enormous respect for money because yeah. they know how money flows in and out of their life know your money inflows and outflows always know your investment balance the money always know what you earned last week and how much you spent last week respect and understand your financial state when i do this with the kids i always ask them and because the class is sort of at the end how much money everybody know how much money they have in their pocket how much how much every lunch money you spend what you find is that the kids who know assuming it's not zero because they're obviously people have zero turns zero is too easy to know but assuming you know you find that the kids who already know who are tracking are already on the road to respecting and understanding money. What you find others who have no idea, why I didn't buy a patch of batting, but I'm going to lend John some money, and they have no idea. That is the disassociation and the disrespect of money that over time will not serve serve you well. It's kind of like the thing that we talked about on the show sometimes, the people who go to the ATM and are pretty, a lot of money's in there, money's in there. But that is not the time. You should have known that if yeah. you respect money, you would have known whether or not money is there. No. You have to know your own strengths and weaknesses. All right. You say, no, me, I put on like a weight. Here's my problem. When you have, when I have cookies and ice cream in my fridge, once I open the cookies, the whole bag of cookies is gone. I don't have the strength to close back. Now, there are people, I know them, right? You know them, Teresha. You look like your body, like you're one of them, right? You open the cookie, you take two cookies, you wrap up back the bag and you put it up. And only two cookies. So I have to control the cookies at the level of my house they cannot come into my house the ice cream cannot come into my house because if these ice cream and the cookie come into my house i am eating it right yes. so to think about your relationship with money if you can go out with the credit card and have discipline right feel free to take it but if you are the person who you go out friday night if you're the boy them never hound yeah man drinks on me whoops i take out the credit card if you're that person leave the credit card at home control yourself based on your own strengths and weaknesses with respect to money there's a famous mythological god in rome the god plautus is the god of wealth he's a cripple with wings which means he's slow to arrive as money because he might hobble 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 but quick to depart it is actually easier to earn money than to hold on to it because holding on to it especially if you don't have a future or right belief about money is where the difficulty lies. The Bible has a saying that says, a fool and his money will soon depart. That is what it is speaking yeah, about. The Bible, right? 
Yeah. Absolutely. So never Absolutely. we you know in this COVID time, let, let's let's yeah. call a spade a spade. You know, we are at home a lot and yeah. you know stores are closed and stuff. And Amazon, because I saw an article today that Amazon is hiring 33,000 new employees. So things yeah. are going on Amazon, so people are ordering. And when we talk about understanding our own weaknesses with credit cards and stuff, because, you know, sometimes when you order the things on Amazon, when you get the boxes, it come like Christmas. Yeah, yes. acting like it's not like a lot of it. It feels so good. We feel good. Yes. You feel like you're on the bonanza. But even yes. we have to manage ourselves online because the magic of pressing pay, order, yes. 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 and yes. that Incomes, you still are absolutely. Which is by the way, one of the other things, yeah, one of the other things that we tend to do with Amazon, right, is you leave all of the things in the in the cart. Don't put things in the cart because that's a reminder of you going shopping again. So if you're putting something, put it to buy, but otherwise don't put it because make you force yourself to have to find it again if you really want it. But what <laughs> happens when you pile up things in the cart? Then always say, sure, let me just get everything, y'all. Yeah, and and I'm feel, feel better about myself. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. <laughs> the other issue now, um, number nine, get a handle on what I call your and your kids money shame. Mm. There is um a, this is a classic, classic thing that I see at Campion, right? Campion is near to um TGIF. And some of the kids can afford to go into TGIF, other the kids can't. But how is a bunch of guys are hanging out, or a bunch of women are hanging out, our friends are hanging out, and they'll say, oh, come on, we go to TGIF. And you will note sometimes where there isn't confidence that somebody will say, boy, a car really go, you know, my mother tell me not to leave school during the day. Or a car really go because I have um, work to do. Or I'm not really going to go because I'm not really that hungry. Actually, it is crucial for yourself and for to learn, teach your kids to be able to say, Actually, I can't afford that. Because the moment you can't say the words, I can't afford that, you have trapped yourself in other people's money issues about you. There is no shame in not being able to afford something. And in fact, even sometimes you can afford something, still say you can't afford it. And to yeah. get comfortable in the mode of, I can't I afford it. That and actually, you cannot I, I judge it. It's no shame. I just can't afford it. I just can't afford it, right? Very, very crucial. What we find, though, with the social Me? media the and the thing, we're all like, no matter if we make up another excuse. <laughs> no, my mother, my mother say I can't go. You know, boy, this month I'm really working. I'm really tired on a Friday night as opposed to actually my credit card bill high. I'm trying to bring down my credit card bill. That This is the stuff where you should be talking with friends. Boy, Rushy, yeah, me know you want to meet at Uncock later, but guess what? I'm just in the credit card bill. Can't do it. Right? Just understand and let us be honest and open about money. There should be no shame. Not a thing now. Give. Do not lend money to family and friends. And this is a shock. I'll be like, ah! Okay. Even if you are lending, what I mean, like, I thought I said, somebody asked to borrow money, you can decide if you're going to lend them. And yes, you should expect it back. But here's what I'm saying. It may not come back. Yeah. If you have money to lend and somebody has to borrow money, often is that you are Marsha and they might be Peter. Mm -hmm. So you want to accept the possibility that the money may not be returned. I'm not saying you can't ask for it. But what you should not do, which we've seen too much of, too many siblings, too many good friends, best friends have broken because the money never was never returned. Yeah, do not, money. Do not lose your friends and family over the money. So make sure whatever you lend is money that you can afford to lose. That you can and lose. You, yeah. Exactly. You see situations, I said, this is madness. The, mm -hmm. the mother has been saving a whole time for, for the picnic in um, September school. She's ready for the books and this and this. And March, April, the friend come, or the man come, or whatever, and said, what, you know, can borrow the money, I'll get it back to you by August. Right? And you know what happened come August. So she done plan our thing for the children's school, the uniform and the books and everything. And you're gonna lend out the money now in April. August, August, she can't even find, find the person, right? You're calling her thing, but the money they put mash up the friendship, best friend, mother, father, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And I say, no, 
You should have said, this is what I can afford. And make sure you still keep the money that you need to start um, the child school in September. Really, really crucial. No, you see that point because a lot of us and 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 there are some of us that we can't say no to it. And you know when people yes. come with a hard luck story, worse when people borrow in, they yes, find absolutely. anywhere that you are. And you have to be willing to say, of the amount you need, this is all I can afford. Because let me tell you, you see, when somebody all owe your money and you see them all on Instagram, look like them have a good time and all I eat, they say, oh, you can I eat. Yeah, eat big food for your money. <laughs> I don't want to death. Very powerful, yes. You don't want to go through life with that kind of baggage. That, that, mm -hmm. that, that baggage. By the way, a funny story. Uh, this is a few years ago. I was going to a wedding in, um, but forget, forget this word, it don't matter because I don't want to identify. So we're all at the airport flying out together. And somebody was flying out to the wedding in the group who them also owe them cousin money. And the cousin come out to the airport. <laughs> And they go, oh, you take trip to blah, 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 New York, it's like that, that, that. I owe me money. Big, big scandal at the Norman Manley International <laughs> Airport. But of course, you understand the man frustration. Where is my money? And you are <laughs> taking off to wedding in New York. Right? <laughs> it's, not right. it's, quite, it's quite a thing. Okay. The financial emergency, what I call the emergency financial plan. Very often, and again, this is why people who, um, uh, got shocked by COVID, you should make a plan if an emergency occurs in your life. You have to know exactly what you're going to do before you're in the midst of the crisis. Because what happens when you're in the middle of the crisis, it's difficult to think. So while things are going well, for example, you have a job, your wife has a job, you have your expenses under control, you must do the job of saying, okay, what if I lost my job? And suddenly, it, took me, it takes me a year to get another job. And we have to rely only on my wife's salary. What do we have to do? And then you write down the plan mm -hmm. that says, we're going to move back in with um, the parents. We're going to take the pick them out of private school. We're going to do this, that, that, and that. You already know. The reason is that if often in a crisis, we go into a daze. And we cannot think straight. But if we already have a written source of what it is that we're going to do, which is do this, do this, do this, do this. Then we just pull the list and we act on it. Mm -hmm. Create the emergency plan before the crisis happens. And that often has to do with pulling back on your lifestyle very quickly. If you have some savings, right? What we tend to do is to hold our expenses without waiting for the situation to improve. It's better mm -hmm. to pull back on the expenses and when the situation improves, increase the expenses again. So, for example, if you have a certain amount of savings and a crisis hits, you lose your job. Blow through no more than 25% of your state savings. And then assume that you've blown through all your savings. How would you act? That way, you've created a floor by which you can start to rebuild as opposed to blowing through 25%, 50%, 75%, and then you're really in a panic. Yes. If you have no savings, then the thing to do is to immediately, right, cut mm -hmm. the lifestyle. When, when it's go back to mother, whatever, whatever, that whole thing, right? And stop the bleed as fast as possible. And I always tell this to people, find those things. You should know this in life before that. Find the things that you love that are free and are cheap. A walk on the beach, coffee with a friend, curling up with a good book. And make sure you have a set of things like that, that if for whatever reason the money goes, you have a sense of pleasures, life pleasures that you're able to lean on. Um, you know, that 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 you can able to 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 do. You know. So um what percentage of your earnings, another poll, what percentage of your earnings do you really save or invest each month? Zero to ten percent. Fifty-one percent of the people say that, so very little, zero to ten percent, and ten to twenty percent is 26 percent which obviously is more uh more in line with the um with the with the possibility yes. yes so um and the last cultivate a true interest in money matters now when i've asked people um have you ever have you ever gone to the bank or gone to a financial advisor and tried to figure out are you getting the best that you can for your money have you ever put a budget together the answer is always the same them say Boy, I know I should do that, you know, but I don't have time. Mm -hmm. And then I say, 
You have time to watch Netflix. You have time to do social media. You have time to do all of a TV, all of a thing. And you don't have time for something as important as money. So one of the things that I, one of the exercises that I do is that I do what's called a what do you want and are your actions conducive with what you want? So when you ask people what's important to them, they will mm -hmm. say God, family and my children, money, learning, right? When you ask them how they spend their time, you find very little spent on money. Plenty of times them don't even them, them don't spend time with them family. Them come home and them turn on the TV. The TV, the TV and the media, social media dominate in terms mm -hmm. of the amount of hours, the family time, the, the girlfriend time, all of that stuff, right? This is creates psychological dis-ease. Because the thing that you say you want, I've never heard anyone say to me, I you know, I really wish I was just doing more social media. I've never heard that, ever, right? Mm -hmm. So what you're doing, what you're acting on things distinct from actually what you desire, you put your own life out of whack. If money is important to you, spend the time reading up on investing keeping track of your money flows, speak to experts to optimize your financial future. You know, some people, they, the banks hate them. The people who know, well, how does fee come? You know, when somebody knows the fee, how you charge me this fee, that fee, et cetera, et cetera. My dad, by the way, is one of those people. You know, every, every, every single fee, right? Why? He's on top of his money. So he's actually looking at the statement and saying, no, but that don't make sense. Many, many people don't matter what the statements of the bank are, and sometimes they don't even open for many people. No sense of interest in the amount of how, how, the, how the money flows are operating. So again, just summarizing the last set of spiritual laws. Charles? Yes. Tashima, you had missed number eight. We're going back through the, the seven to yes. 12. To 12. Sorry, can I say the, um, the, okay, great. Respect money and it will respect you. Know your strengths and weaknesses when it comes to money. If you have discipline, you can go out with the credit card. If you don't have any discipline, leave the credit card at home and just take the cash that you're going to use. Socialize across the financial spectrum, right? You can know rich people, but you must know some uh, poorer people too. Other people's financial lives can give you perspective. Get a handle on money shame and be able to say the words, I can't afford that. And it doesn't matter. By the way, if you lose friends because you say you can't afford that, them and I are your friends, right? Yeah. Keep on stepping. Give, do not lend money to family and friends. Do not lose good friends or lose good family members because you're going to don't get money back from what you lend them, right? So lend only that which you can afford to lose. Those with an emergency, we think in an emergency, have a plan before a crisis hits and execute it quickly, right? And cultivate a true interest in money matters. And do not say you don't have time because it cannot be that you're trying to build a net work net worth of a certain amount and you give it no time these are the spiritual laws of money and if we as individuals and we as black people reorient our mind towards saving and investing mm -hmm. over consuming we will be able to build legacies and leave, not only leaving stuff for our children, but creating countries of magnificent wealth. Wow. So viewers, we have gone through the 12 spiritual laws of money. Remember that this memo is available via email. Please, if you have not already received it, email us at sme at psoj.org. This and all the memos, I think we are now at episode 23 of COVID. -J. Wow. So there's mm -hmm. a one of information that's available. Um, Nevada, we also have small business portal um, yeah. on which um, business owners or persons who persons who are in business, persons who are interested in business, or many of our viewers who just want to keep on top of things. A wealth of information is available. What's a website for small business portal again, Nevada? Can remind uh, people? Small, small business, small business portal.com. Smallbusinessportal.com. Um, 
I see some in the past. I knew this question was going to be asked. I'm just going to ask our production crew to again put up the slides, this 12 spiritual laws of money, because I know people are writing them down. Remember, number one, money is narrative fiction. Rich enough is a combination of what you have and what you desire. Two, those with an extended financial horizon beyond the now will build greater wealth over time. Remember, you're thinking five to 10 years. Money comes to those least interested in the things money can buy. Value people first, then money, then things. Dream as a producer, not a consumer. Four, you cannot work your way into wealth. You can only save and invest your way into it. Earn while you sleep, understand inflation and risk. Five, financial independence is a leading source of mental strength and peace of mind. Remember, Brock will wake you up at night. Six, the wealth of a community begins with understanding good debt and bad debt. Number seven, Respect money and it will respect you. Know your own strength and weaknesses when it comes to money. Eight, socialize across the financial spectrum. Other people's financial lives can give you perspective. So you want a broad range of people in your circle. Get a handle on money shame and be able to say the words, I can't afford that. May I have it? Number 10, Give, not lend money to family and friends. Know how much you are. You can, in fact, give without having to try find a way to beat up the people them. Those with an emergency hunker down plan before a crisis will emerge faster and stronger. And 12, cultivate a true interest in money matters. Nevada also talked to us about the Dignity Fund. The fun that you have that you can walk away from just about anything and anyone. And my particular favorite, let your lifestyle lag behind your income, not your income lag behind your lifestyle. Now we are at one hour and seven minutes into the show and the commentary and the questions are great. Nevada, I think we are going to need to take... Yeah. Um, but that's yeah, some good Rupert from the Bronx in New York. Yes, I, 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 Rupert. Hi, New Rupert. And yes. I, see, um, I have a question here from Sa Sasha British Golding. Okay. Okay. Oh, after, all, after all the savings over the years, when is the right time to go in the saving? When is, when is, um, she just wants to know when is the right time. And that is a question that has come yeah. up. So when, is, so, so when is the right time? Okay. So the first thing you ask is what is the time that you're going to actually start saving? And the truth is when I talk to the Cambium students, I because the really thing you're first trying to learn is the principle of putting money away. So I even tell people to start from saving the lunch money. Any money you get, mm -hmm. um, whether it's lunch money or Christmas money or whatever. Now, I will tell you this. Interestingly. There was a situation that I had at Campion from a guy who, bright guy, who took my class and he lived in Spanish town. And he took what I said to heart and actually ended up saving quite a bit of money over the course of the year. At one point, he came to me most distressed, the tears in his eyes and said, Mr. Power, I need your help. I said, why? What happened? And he said, I need you to talk to my mother. What happened was his mother discovered that he had all this money. And the reason he had all this money was because he was saving. Mm -hmm. But... Even with her salary, she had never seen that much money accumulated. Remember, the money was accumulated based on the lunch money that he wasn't eating. I called her and I actually said, I explained the situation. Obviously, I don't want to get involved with you, you and your child, but what, you, what there's an important lesson that he has learned. Do you see what is possible in terms of saving? And what she said was, boy, I can't have him have that kind of money when his sister needs this and that and all kinds of things, right? So I think it broke, broke his thing. And I kept telling him, it doesn't matter. The proof has already been made. I that need you to recognize that there is a way for you out of poverty because you have already accumulated money in one setting that your mother had never seen from money that she was giving you. So that becomes the crucial first thing. Then there are many types of investment that require you have some kind of minimum. So I always say, 
mostly you just start, mattress start with the bank somewhere safe whatever whatever don't worry so much about interest yet interest and investing mm -hmm. but keep tracking the types of things you want to do and what the minimum amounts are in those particular situations you know some people like Barita, for example, is willing to take very small numbers. But there are other investment funds which actually, um, uh, Cygnus, for example, they want much bigger money. So you, you should be watching what financial options are available to you at different types of savings. But the first thing to do is get in the habit of this 15 to 30 percent. Uh, and um, I, I think another thing that really um, did kind of you know, juke people is yes. uh, that you you really the you, your money needs to be earning for you while you are sleeping. So when we think, so we can really own a, earn only earn a finite amount unless you have all kind of royalties, and even yeah. then, it's finite. Yes. So yes. your money should be earning for you while you sleep. And I know this is going to lead to a part two because I'm seeing questions about budgeting. Um, people are asking about even the age because I know yeah. parents are thinking, when do I start these conversations with my ch with my children? Yeah. But yeah. Nevada, before we go tonight, I'd love you to, to just go through age groups. In your yeah. 20s, what should you be thinking? In yeah. your 30s, in your 40s, in your 50s? Yeah. Because one of the things we forget is that people are living longer. So a big yeah. part of the saving is we're living, we're trying to save for the time that we're not earning. So I want you to mm -hmm. read through the decade yeah. quickly yeah. and let's talk yeah. about what we need to be thinking. Absolutely. Well, first of all, I want to talk about kids and yeah. the, at the first level, like young, young people. And this is true in many of the Jewish. The Jewish, the Jewish households. Any money that the kids get, they have to put it into three buckets. They can decide how the three break down, but it has to be three. One is one amount of it is that you're going to be you're going to be saved, you're going to be spending. So I'm going to buy something. I'm which is continue the conversation. I'm just going to jump off screen for a moment to get a plug. Continue. No, no problem. No problem. So one of the things that um, one of the things that um, th these kids learn, right, is that you break the money to a third, a third, a third, or some version. A third is spend on what you want. The, another third is save to buy something specific. So the idea of a goal, and then the other third is save just because because of an emergency. The earlier we can teach kids that. Where, what they must do with the Christmas money is not spend the whole thing right away, right? Because we're teaching bad money metaphors, bad money habits. So the first thing is to get that handle on, I am in control of money. When you get to um, your early 20s after college, your first job, that is when you also have to be projecting again. There's a certain amount of things that I'm going to need in my 30s, and there's a certain amount of things that I'm going to need for retirement. Much smaller to put away for retirement, but and more risky. And then stuff that you're trying to do for, for in your 30s, you um you start you start putting it away there. Again, remember it's crucial to remember the story of Marsha versus Peter and so on, and how the various var various things go. You then start to so again at all these points, you're trying to manage the amount of money that you put away as well as how early you start putting it away. You move towards, and again, some of it is the goal. At some point, you want to make, start make, thinking about making a deposit towards possibly a home or ideally a business that you want to start at some point or some other version of something where you're working the money towards. And in that situation, that's between your 20s and your 30s, where you start to put away money with respect to those plans, whether it's a housing deposit or a, um, or a business. And of course, increasingly the retirement. As it gets, as you get older and older, and because you should be able to put away more and more, because most people's um, incomes and so on increase as, as you go forward, your the complexity of your investments starts to increase. You start with a basic saving account, but mm -hmm. by the time you're in your mid to late twenties, you should be talking about investment um, investment accounts and so on. And therefore, mm -hmm. in your forties, you yeah. want more right buying real estate to rent and all kinds of things or starting businesses and so on. So it's a combination of you are always have three minds, what you need a year from now, what you need three, five years from now, and what you need for retirement, as well as you increasingly get more complicated in the types of investments that you put away. 
So Nevada, this obviously is going to need a part two because we're going to need to break down what those kind of things look like. And we're right. seeing, um, I see somebody, I see okay, mention. Hold on a second, Russ Marshall, sir. I see, I see Carl, because I've heard this a lot, right? We had this knowledge 10 years ago. Carl, yeah. do not beat yourself up. Uh -huh. What's the point of that, right? Start now. Because I have found when people beat themselves up, boy, I should have known 10 years ago, no, so I can't buy it too late. No. It is always, it's the same thing I told, told the kid when his mother took the money, right? The proof is, it, remember, this, we, we started with the guy, who, the woman who started early, right away, she earned a certain amount, but the guy who started five years later, he was still okay. So do not take the fact that you have not started this. Now you know. Start tomorrow. Because yeah. now, 10 years from now, your situation is going to be different than if you just still didn't know. So do not worry about the fact that you didn't know. So what? Moving forward. You're moving forward. I see um, Sia Hyatt here asking about in your 60s. Yes. What, what do you think about in your 60s? Yes. Same principle, Sia. Minimize your if you if you if you're about to done saving before, fine. But same principles. Minimize your expenses and start to put away stuff for three years, five years, right? Is the principles do not change. And it's about getting control of the money that is flowing through you. 60s is the same. And in fact, again, same thing I said to you, I said to Charles, don't worry if you never start before. Mm -hmm. Start now. It's okay. Because the flows of money, the spiritual laws of money are operative at any age. Yes, if you start earlier, more will come. But even if you start later, more will come than if you didn't follow the laws. And you I just didn't close, my, close my eyes, right? Sixties, no worries, no worries. Yeah. Wow, well, Nevada. Some gems that you have dropped here today, and I think certainly coming out from the commentary, we're seeing an entire other show that we're going to have to go through some of of these points. But very key, start now. Let's not worry about what we didn't do before start now. We have to be teaching our children these very important laws about money. You have to respect money. Money won't respect you if you don't respect it. And remember, a fool and his money and or her money easily part. For our young people, now you know you don't have an excuse. That very important point, if you were to be asked the question, how much money you have in your kitty right you now? Do you know how much cash you have? How much do you have in your investments? Do you have any idea? You're not supposed to be thinking about money in, for the next six months. Because, you know, sometimes we think so short term and worse when no money down. No money down just feels so good. No interest payment till January. Oh, it feels so right. When January comes, you're still going to have the interest payment. You're going to just have it for a longer time and probably more money. Think about that car. It, there's nothing like the new car smell coming off of that lot. And you really want to just wind on the window and make people say, breeze a blow upon you in a nice car. But remember, that car is depreciating as you are driving off the lot. Ask yourself some questions. Can I actually afford this car at this time? Can I be put myself in a position that I save towards it? I save, in fact, I'm saving, I'm dreaming about money, seeing wealth, rather than the thing and then i get to a point where i can't get those things wow nevada the gems tonight and please again remember let your lifestyle lag so your lifestyle is supposed to way back at your income do not let your income be running out of breath trying to catch up with your lifestyle it never will start now you have the 12 spiritual laws of money. Wow, what an evening, Nevada. We are back next week, Thursday. We, 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 gave, we gave everybody a break for two weeks to go through the electioneering. And we come back strong with lots of points to discuss. We're going to be going through your questions and we will be answering um, these questions. But we're also going to be looking to see if we need to do a part two. Drop us a line and a comment if you want a part two. And we're looking forward to you sharing, share, share, and comment. You can find us right on this page 
if you've been wondering what to do with your time rather than um, spending it watching other people's lives, you could spend it binge watching past episodes of COVID Cast JA. So we look forward to seeing you again next week, Thursday at 7.30 p.m. for COVID Cast JA. Please, if you don't have our memos, email us right now. SME at PSOJ.org. See you next week. Nevada, though. You know, yes. that's do, please don't say anything scandalous, though. But I need you to, you know, people like to hear a little something from you before they leave. What's the two key points you want to leave people with tonight? I think that the things are about the horizon, extending our financial horizon, being mm -hmm. very clear about, about that. Um, this is uh, one of my missions, actually, for Jamaica and even broader for black people. My, my greatest desire if, is to offer us to extend our financial horizon, to dream of assets invested more than the consumer items. Forgetting about, Lord, in five years, I want to be in that car. Lord, in five years, I want to be sitting on this amount of assets. And understand, and this is the problem with having money in the bank or money invested, right? Nobody doesn't see it. So don't play well on social media. And really, if, if, we, if we need to be able to put up something, maybe we should start doing that because that at least would help. Us. You know what yeah, me not right no BMW, but how much money me have in my uh, investment account, right? No, but we don't do that because we're tacky. So the problem yeah. is we're spending more time on the consumer thing rather than the investing. So horizon, investing, and don't worry about that you didn't start. You can start now because you don't know. The tragedy is to know now and then still don't start, right? So those would be my three, my three main, main things to, to, to take away. And please spend some time with the memo, taking notes, writing about the implications for your, your own life, whatever age you are, and what is it that you can do uh, very specifically with any of these. And yeah. also, I give anybody who's still away money and I'll get it back. Hug them yeah. up. Mm -hmm. I want to see that picture on Instagram. Like it, man. Like it. Right. Like it. Exactly. <laughs> so we will Michelle, see you. Yes. <laughs> We're going to see you again next week, Thursday at 7.30. Looking forward to another empowerment. Um, thank you very much. I did have a great birthday. I accept those birthday wishes. Thank you. So we'll see you again next week, Thursday, 7.30. And remember, you can spend some time catching up, binge watching on all we've been talking about with business, with money, so many great topics. We're at episode 23. So spend some time, but also rewatch this episode with your piece of paper and go through your dreams because we want the best for you. You're dreaming big now. You're dreaming how much money you're going to sit on. All right? Next Absolutely. week. Oh, good.